I think there are two main issues here. One is that uh, the world demand for resources is growing very fast because we've got a growing middle class that uses a lot more resources than they used to do when they were poorer. And the second is that technological advance and globalization is leading to an increasing complexity of, of links between different resources and between resources in different locations. And this is what we call the nexus. In the context of our report, we've looked at five resources, land, water, food, minerals, and energy. And for us, the nexus is the links between these five resources. And what we're saying is that resources are, one resource is an input into another resource or can be a substitute for another resource. And so decisions made about one resource in one part of the world affect a different resource in another part of the world. A decision on biofuels in Europe affects food and water in Africa. A decision on electrical cars in China can affect lithium demand from Latin America and many other of these linkages that are growing in scope and complexity. We've identified three realms of the nexus. A market realm, a national interest realm, and a human security realm. In the market realm, these links between the resources are driven by the market. So a decision is made in one part of the world on one resource, and that is transmitted to another resource in another part of the world by market forces. And the examples we've already mentioned um, cover that realm. The national interest or state interest or strategic realm is quite different. That is driven by state interests, states asserting their sovereign rights over the use of resources and negatively affecting other states that uh, should also have equal rights. And we've looked at two types of example. One is the seas, where certain countries have asserted their rights over the seas and tried to exclude others. The other example is fresh water, where upstream states use the fresh water for energy and deny uh, or reduce the flow of water to downstream states, which affects their food, water, and, and other supplies. The report has identified quite a long agenda of issues that, that can be addressed by the transatlantic community. But in, in simple terms, we have four pillars. The first pillar is to put our own house in order. That is, Europe and North America should work together to address problems at home. The second pillar is to engage the wider Atlantic. And this recognizes that in the South Atlantic, there are a lot of resources on land and in the sea. There are a lot of shared security challenges and important countries that are developing and that we really should engage these nations in managing the whole Atlantic. The third pillar is to engage other new players. And this is looking particularly to, to Asia, China, India, the Middle East, rising African countries and, and, and Russia to engage them in addressing with us uh, some of the global nexus challenges that we've identified. The final pillar is to support international institutions, and that is in two ways. One is to reinforce uh, existing institutions uh, that maybe are not getting the support they should do. And the second is to think about creating new institutions, particularly on data gathering, data management, and policy learning. 